thinking of moving your business to Google Workspace? Hold on, don't rush it just yet. Let me give you a checklist that could save you from a ton of headaches later. In this video, we're going to go over the essential steps you need to take before starting a Google Workspace migration. This checklist will help you avoid surprises, reduce downtime, and keep your team happy throughout the process. My name is Carlos, and I help small businesses around the world with their Microsoft 365 and Google Workspace subscription. For more information, visit itwithcarlos.com. All right, let's get into it. First thing first, make sure you have access to your domain registrar or DNS control panel. Whether it is GoDaddy, Namecheap, Google Domains, or your hosting company, you will need to update DNS records when it is time to switch to Google Workspace. And we are not just talking about MX record. You will also need to add a TXT record to verify your domain name with Google. Update or add the SPF record to authorize Google to send emails. Set up DKIM for email authentication. And configure DMAR record to protect your domain from spoofing or phishing. These are all important for email deliverability and overall domain protection. So don't skip them. You need to understand where your emails are currently hosted. Are you migrating from IMAP, Microsoft Exchange, or POP3? This matters because your migration tool or method will depend on that. Also gather admin panel credentials, email passwords if required, and technical info like server names and ports. A quick note if you're using POP3. That data is usually stored locally in each user's devices. So, unless they back it up or export it, it won't be included in the migration. This is super important if you're using Outlook or Apple Mail with POP settings. Make a plan to collect PST files or local backups before moving forward. Take a look on what each user actually needs. That includes mailbox sizes, calendars and contacts, label, folders and filters, existing signatures, forwarding rules, etc. Are you using Share Drive? Are they using integrations on mobile apps? This audit helps you choose the right license and tools later. Choose the right Google Workspace licenses. Not everyone may need the same features. Some users may be fine with Business Starter, while others need a standard or plus for advanced features like eDiscovery, Vault, and Share Drive. But here's a really important detail. If you are a small business with only a few users, Google may not allow you to mix license types. That means everyone would need to be on the same plan, not mixing starter with the standard licenses, for example. To find out if you are eligible to mix licenses, I recommend contacting Google's Workspace Sales Team or working with a Google partner. Get that clarified before you make the purchase, so you don't get stuck with the wrong setup. Consider AI tools. Google's rolling out AI tools on their Gemini for Workspace. If your team wants help writing emails, summarizing docs, or analyzing data in sheets, you will need Business Standard or higher and Gemini licenses. These are not included in startup licenses, so you will need to plan and budget for them if that's part of your workflow. Review cloud storage needs. Google now uses pool storage which means all your users share a storage pool. So 10 users, for example, on business standards, give you two terabytes each pool across the company. That is 20 terabytes for the whole team. Review Gmail storage per user, Google Drive usage, share drive requirements, growth expectation for the next one to two years. This helps avoid running out of space later and give you a better idea of the plan that you will need. Now that everything is scoped, create a plan. Pick your migration tool, like for example, Google's native tools, GWMME, or any other third-party tool. Set a cutover date and communicate clearly to your users. Send a notice at least one week before. Remind them the day before. Stop access to the old system after cutover. Update your MX record and make sure new emails are flowing into Google Workspace. Sometimes it could be a good idea to test with a few accounts first before moving everyone. Even if your users know Gmail, Google Workspace brings more. Docs, Drive, Calendar Sharing, Meet, and Admin Tools. 
offer a short training session or video, a frequent ask questions quick start guide, a support contact, even if it is just your own email, in case something breaks, and a little training goes a long way. And that's your Google Workspace migration checklist. If you follow these steps, you will have a smoother migration and fewer post-migration surprises. Need help planning or managing your migration? Drop your question in the comments below or reach me out directly at itwithcarlos.com. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Remember, stay secure in the cloud and keep tech savvy.